Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to look at the second book in the Princess Diaries. Now, if you missed my first review or my intro to this book series, please check them out. These books do, in fact, have to be read in order, otherwise they do not make sense. Um, and again, I will reiterate this. These are fluff. They're fun fluff, but they're fluff. Um, they're just kind of entertaining books to read. So check out the first videos. We're going to move on to the second. So this is the Princess Diaries, Princess in the Spotlight. Okay, so started this book. Mia's mother's pregnant. <laughs> it's October. Uh, she's been dating her Mia's math teacher for about a month and now she's pregnant. Mia is shocked. Yeah. She's 14 years old. Her mother's dating her algebra teacher. She's recently found out she's the heir to the throne of a small European princess and her mother is now pregnant out of wedlock again this time with Mia's algebra teacher which she's failing algebra so what ended up happening in this book which is kind of funny because grandma is crazy her grandmother finds out well literally what happens is Mia mother finds out she's getting pregnant um, eventually her her mother tells the algebra teacher, Mr. G, um, they decide to get married with the intention of going to the courthouse and getting married because again, her mother's pregnant. So, however, Mia ends up being pressured by her grandmother to go on television and do some interview with a hard hitting reporter who's also at the moment uh, sleeping with her father. This is where Mia is surprised when she meets this woman. It's like, look, she's actually intelligent. She seems to have a brain stem. Yes, that's similar to what she says, uh, indicating her father really dates a lot of bimbos. That's what she's used to. So this woman's actually intelligent. She has a brain. Um, but one prior to this, Mia had gotten sick with bronchitis. So under the effects of codeine, um, codeine cough syrup, she blurts out that her mother is pregnant and planning to marry her algebra teacher and, and pretty much to the entire world, uh, which she feels horrible about. Again, she's on the effects of coding. She's 14 years old. Um, she's only found out she was a princess about a month ago. And her main focus is surviving high school. She apparently has a secret admirer. And again, understandable. She's freaked out. Her mother is pregnant again, this time with her algebra teacher's baby and they're getting married so she's gonna have to be living with one of her teachers of a class she's failing <laughs> so um having being someone who hated math in school uh yeah this would be mortifying to me too particularly considering i was also failing uh algebra my freshman year in high school unlike mia however i got a d and had to retake it um because math sucks um uh, in my opinion uh I, the school system's just not my thing. So moving on. So this book revolves around Mia's grandmother trying to throw a giant society wedding for her mother on a, basically on Halloween. That's when they intend to get married. And then her grandmother calls her mother's parents. Now her mother grew up in, in a very, very small town in Indiana. Uh, yeah, a very little tiny town that she wanted to escape. She does. She pretty much, since her parents were not supportive of her having Mia, um, Mia was last there when she was like maybe 10. So uh, Helen Thermopolis does not like her, doesn't like her parents. Again, they run, they live in a very, very small town. They run a hardware store in a farming community. They're country hicks. So. Her grandmother calling them, having them show up at her parent, her her mother's loft, noticeably freaks her mother out a lot. Basically, Mia comes home from her princess lessons to find her mother hiding in the bathroom, and her parents, her her grandparents, her Mima and Papa, uh, are outside with her cousin. I don't know what the cousin's name is. Uh, the cousin has an interesting part to play in this. Um, who was very, very nerdy. He was abandoned by um, Mia's aunt at some point and is off globetrotting. And her mother can't stand her sister because her sister is a Republican. So what is the 
cousin's name. Let's see if I can bring him up in the book series. These are still written in diary format. You can kind of see how they're occasionally short little blurbs here, along with me as math homework and various other things. So let us see if I can find her English journal and her obsession with what her mother should be eating during pregnancy. Yeah, she's obsessing about that again, teenage girl, and what her mother should be avoiding. She does this throughout her mother's pregnancy and then goes into being paranoid about her younger sibling. So let's see, her grandmother's going crazy. But again, her cousin who, in this case, I cannot find his name, but nonetheless, her cousin shows up. He's kind of uh, slightly nerdy and then proceeds to disappear with Lily. Lily meets him because he comes to school with her and then they disappear for a while. Um, why grandma's, her grandmother's throwing this big society party with her grandparents and inviting old people, including Mr. and Mrs. Trump. Yes, they're brought up along with Prince Andrew. Again, these books came out in the early 2000s. This was before Trump decided to take over the country and decide to destroy it before being kicked out and making a massive, massive mess. Um, and killing thousands of people. But again, this is early 2000s, so that's the dated part, along with, you know, Prince Andrew, who caught up in a sex scandal. Uh, but again, they're briefly mentioned because they're being invited to this huge society wedding her grandmother wants to uh, throw. And yes, they call her father, and he's like, I will take care of this. And then Demiris Mia is dealing with, one, the fact that her mother is pregnant, and her grandmother is insane, and she's failing algebra and now she has a secret admirer it turns out to be her um again I'm revealing here spoilers massive it's her lab partner kenny and no she doesn't actually really like him but she doesn't quite know what to do about it her cousin being off with lily he wanted to be a male model so she shows him how to dress helps him with his speech and then he gets signed with a male modeling agency and he becomes an underwear model. Yeah, his grandparents are not happy. He's ever very, very good looking, but still his grandparents are, her gra obviously her Indiana small town grandparents are not happy all of a sudden their grandson is going to be a male underwear model in New York. He's actually not brought up again after this. Um, I'm like in book five or six at this point and he's not been brought up. He disappears after this book. Um, but it kind of goes through her life dealing with this and her grandmother being crazy and trying to plan this giant wedding. And the conclusion is her father can't stop the wedding. He can, however, get her mother and her uh, stepfather, soon to be stepfather, out of town, which is what, she, what he does. Mia, basically, um, all the wedding is set up. Her grandparents are there. She's in a dress and it's Halloween. And basically her father hands her a letter and it's from her mother. It's like, your father, we left for Cancun this morning and by the time you read this, we've eloped. And essentially her father announces it to everybody. It's like, but there's a big party and we will feed you. So that's essentially part of the conclusion of this book. And then Mia's able to, um, also Martha Stewart is mentioned in this book for some bizarre reason. And Mia's obsession with David Hasselhoff. A David Hasselhoff. If you're not familiar with him, nostalgia with Baywatch and further nostalgia with Knight Rider and Germans love him. Um, and Mia has a big thing with Baywatch. That's mentioned in the first book as well as this one, as along with various other uh, strange, strange things. Um, Mia does essentially various media things because she's a teenage girl. And she ends up being able to meet up with her friends, including the semi-boyfriend Kenny and her crush, her brother, her best friend Lily's brother, Michael, um, who's a senior, and goes to, I think, a midnight showing of, what is it? I believe, why on earth can my brain not work? She's able to meet up with her friends at, let's see, some sort of Japanese, no, um, not Japanese, marathon I believe it is a showing of why is my brain not working it's very very well known rock opera um let me see Rocky Horror Picture Show so that's what it is so she's up in a she's in a bright pink dress and 
goes to this with apparently Martha Stewart gets her a wand and some sort of crown because it's Martha Stewart and she can whip up all sorts of things supposedly um I think this was before she went to prison and started hooking up with Snoop Dogg I still find that weird mind you I find it weird that yeah Snoop Dogg was on TV shows for children but moving on um that's essentially the end of this book her mother has gotten married and gone off to Cancun and the day is saved and she's still kind of dealing with Kenny um, who's her lab partner and she doesn't really like it she still has to figure out how to break up with Kenny and get with Michael so that's the end of this book again it's fun it's fluff it's a teenager writing about her life and the insanity of being a princess and still having to go to high school and boys and math homework and freaking out her mother who's very very slightly flighty um, and is a painter <laughs> and is slightly crazy is now marrying her algebra teacher and pregnant so and crazy grandparents and her cousin becoming an underwear model um so things are things are very very strange but again it's fun it's fluff it's very teenage obsession of a little white girl in a very very strange world living in new york and all these weird things happening to her and it's fun so that is the second installment of the princess diaries um, if you like what you see, check out the rest of my channel. I have a bunch of book reviews. Some are dark, some are light, some are picture books, some are some interesting films, some have film tie-ins. I do some kids travel stuff and some secular homeschooling stuff thrown in there as well. So be sure to like and subscribe. Check out what I've got. Look forward to more. Thank you.